Oh look, it's another OPM question. OM 12 P43 question 9. A student designed a sensor to monitor temperature in the fridge. Hmm, I see. When it's too hot, do something. When it's too cold, do something. Wow, look at this. Double resistor train on this side. A, B, oh, this is sensing part, processing part, and output part. Uh, this looks like LEDs, lights. So what do we want to do? Name the components used in the output device. What is this one? Ah, this one is LED diode, but with arrow come out. So we're going to write here, light emitting diodes. Um, the mask scheme sometimes accept if you write the short form, but why not? It's just, just one mark. Just write the whole thing out. Bracket LED. To be safe, to be sure. So this is just one mark by itself. Uh, an op M is used as a processing unit. Describe the function of this processing unit. Two marks. Describe. Hmm. Why do we have this op M here in the first place? Oh, what kind of op M circuit is this? This looks like a comparator circuit. This op M is set up in such a way to compare between the voltage of V minus and V plus and see which one is bigger. Then it will send a V out. So this is what the purpose of a comparator is. all just compare V minus and V plus. Which one bigger? Negative bigger. You send negative out. Law. Okay, so V out can be either plus or minus 5 volts, depending on which one is bigger, whether V minus or V plus. So let's go and see how to write that out. What is the purpose of this comparator op M? Because there are a few op M types of circuit. This one, we want to say that the so-called comparator op M will output either a high, our high output, why I put bracket, Either will output high, which is your 5 volts, or a low output, which is negative 5 volts, depending. You're comparing between what? The two inputs, right? Depending on which input. There's only two, so that will be our V plus or V minus, which input is greater or at a higher potential. That's the proper way to say it. Higher potential. There we go. Two marks. One is you say uh, it will output high or low. That's the first one. Depending on which input is at the higher potential. So that's the second part. So you're comparing between inputs. One example is I can say, well, let's say the potential here is 18 volts. Down here is 16 volt. Which one is bigger? V minus. So your output will be negative 5 volts. Negative wins, so negative 5 out. That's just what it means, so you compare between both. Okay, now what are we supposed to do next? Let's see. Say the function of resistor C and D. C and D is right here. Why do we have two resistors here and a potential divider? My question for you is, will the potential of V plus be changing? Will it be changing? Will the potential at this point be changing? Actually, no, because these resistors are constant. Their R values are fixed. RD is fixed. RC, fixed, not going to change. So this one is going to be a steady, constant potential. V plus is just going to be fixed. It's like your reference point. Okay, so the potential divider CD is just to fix V plus. That's all, that's all the purpose is. So how are we going to say that? Uh, we can say that the purpose of that is to set a constant potential. Constant or reference potential. Lah. If it's 4.5 volt, it's just always 4.5 volts. So reference potential for who? For the non-inverting input, also known as the V plus input. This is a name for it. Okay, one mark. Ding. What about resistor B? What is the function of resistor B? Hmm, let's go up and see. So resistor B is down on this side, connected to the thermistor. Ah, the purpose of this thermistor is to change the resistance depending on the temperature. Ah, that's the one they're going to measure the temperature of the fridge. But what about this variable resistor down here? 
the purpose of that resistor is to adjust the switch over temperature or the limit where your potential will reach V plus or V minus, whatever that is. Uh. So this is what we call to set the switch over temperature. Because don't forget this potential divider. So B will take a potential, A will also take a potential. And by adjusting that, you can set this point so that the switch over temperature is different. So we're going to write that down over here. So we can say this is the purpose of resistor B is to determine the switch over temperature right here. So-called switch over temperature. Lah. When will the output suddenly change? Ah, switch over temperature can be determined by V minus. Okay. Otherwise, uh, your thermistor just change temperature, change temperature, change, 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 but it never, it might never even reach V plus or go near or cross over V plus. Okay, lah. Maybe we say V plus is fixed, 4.5 volt. Maybe uh, your temperature change, 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 but your range is only for the top part, 5 to 8 volts. Huh? Then useless, then you won't be able to switch the output because 4.5 is always smaller than 5 to 8 volts. So that's not good. You need to be able to adjust the range of what could be the potential at this point. So that's why we have this switch over temperature to adjust. What's the limit? So maybe you adjust, 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 just nice so that V minus could have a value of maybe 3 to, to 6 volts. Now that's a good range because depending on the temperature change, temperature high, temperature low, it could be 3 or 6. Ah, at some point it will be more than 4.5. At some point it will be less than 4.5. Then only your output can switch either plus or minus, plus or minus. Now that's what we call a switch over. This one is to adjust it. Now you know the knob, you open the fridge, there's a knob you can turn the temperature at. That's your knob right there. To set how cold you want your uh, fridge to be. Okay, so that is this thing here. Lah. I'm just going to put, a, this one is an independent mark, so B1. Moving on to the next part of D. Oh, this one you haven't tried yet, you should try drawing. Okay, the output device is changed so that now you may use to switch on a high voltage circuit. State the component that is used in the new output device. Hmm. So down here, they remove all the LED. Take away LED. Something need to connect to high voltage. Oh, when you see high voltage, you should know, oh, dangerous. High voltage cannot connect to open end like that directly. Leh. You're going to burn. Cannot, cannot, cannot. So the thing that will protect the high vo uh, the op amp from high voltage is the relay switch. Special kind of switch. If you haven't checked out the video for relay, go check out that one on output devices. So we just write here relay, lo, one mark. Okay. And how do we draw this? Uh? Show how the component, component in one, so this will be our relay. We need to draw a relay together with a diode Oh, are connected so that high voltage may be switched on when output is negative. So on when negative. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. On, negative. Let's first draw the relay first. How to draw relay output for this part. Mm, let's do this. First, we need a high voltage circuit. Okay, so I'm just going to put a switch here. The contact will only be made if something attracts this metal piece down. Ah, then it will touch together and complete the circuit. On the other side, I need to put a relay. So let me extend the ground a little bit more. So how to draw a relay? Leh? Usually you can draw a coil if you want, but I just draw a box. It's pretty fine enough. Sometimes you will see people online in Google, they draw like this to represent the relay switch. Also can, but for now we just say relay coil can already. Lah. So this part is the relay coil where it has an electromagnet that will attract this switch to close if there's current flowing through the relay. Now, the actual relay switch is the whole thing. Lah. So this whole thing is inside a relay switch. One unit. But now you have linked together both parts of the circuit, the left side circuit, the right side circuit. Oh, forgot to connect to ground. Okay. So now, if we leave it like this, just as it is, we have one problem. You see, if the output is plus 5, positive, uh, ground is bottom level, right? 0. So it means down here is 0 volts. 
Where will current flow? Will current flow? Yes. From high potential all the way down to low potential. Then the relay will activate. Eh, but we only want it to activate when it's negative. Uh, so something is wrong here. Hmm. Let's double check the other way. What if the output is negative 5? Will there be a current flow? Yes, from high to low. So high is ground, flow down to negative. Also uh, activate wall. Oh, oh. So we want to prevent the, 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 the other one from activating. So we put a diode right here. Okay, we put a diode right here, this way. That way, when your output is negative, ah, correct, then current will flow through that. No problem. But when your output is positive 5, then no current will flow because the diode will not let current flow that way. Diode will not conduct. It's like, nope. Ah, so this one only switch on uh, when the output is negative. So when it's negative plus 5, no output. Okay, so this will only work when it's negative 5. Yay! High to low, current flowing. Now, this is a two-mark relay question, so you don't have to draw the protection circuit. Uh, but if you really wanted to, you could draw the protection circuit just in case. So know that relay coil actually uh, is a is an inductor inside there. If you, inside the box. Uh, I draw a box only, right? Inside there is actually an iron core with a, 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 a inductor coil like this. So this one become magnetized north and south or whatever that is and then attract the metal switch on the right side so the moment you deactivate or oh, no current the coil will not like that change eh where's the current i, I thought we had current just now flowing through us where where did it go so <laughs> it's going to try to oppose that change and create an induced current like that now that's not good because your op m is off you don't want that to spoil your op amp. So we need to create an alternative part to divert this current, induce current to go to ground. So that's why sometimes you can draw a protection diode right here to protect the op amp from induced current when you turn off the the the, the, the relay. Okay, um, usually if they have three marks only, you need to draw. La. If two marks, only also can. Okay, where do the marks come from? Let's take a look at the mark scheme. So first mark comes if your relay connected correctly for op amp output and high voltage circuit. Not very helpful, right? Connected correctly. What does it mean correctly? It means this part here, relay on this side to the op amp. And the high voltage side got a switch. So this one is B1. The second mark usually comes from your diode. Diode in the correct polarity. So pointing to the left side. Then that will be correct to control only, enable only one output of the op amp to activate the relay. And that is when it is negative five. Ah, then only got current flow. Okay, so that is the relay question. I think that's it. Wow, pretty fast. Okay, so make sure you know how to explain what is happening in this comparator op amp circuit. How to Think about all this potential changing and also how to draw relay outputs for all these kind of comparator circuits. Okay, so that's all for this question. I will see you in the next example or theory video. Bye-bye.